Hello everyone, welcome to JSK Exam. My name is Deepak. Here in this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about another important aspect of Cypress framework, right? So here, what we are going to do is like essentially going to be reading a file from our downloads folder, and that file will hold data pertaining to our test cases, and that's the data which we would use to test our test cases. So there is a particular way to read the files, CSV files or XLSS file or text file in the cypress and the cypress command is already given for it so let me just take you back to the browser and i'll show you what i'm exactly mean so if you come here and let's say search for file read So here, if you come here, um, head for this particular documentation, cy.filerate is a query, is now a query command. What it essentially means is that it can read the file and can basically make it, make the data available in the .json format. This particular function is available from the Cypress command itself, using which you can actually read the file. So how do we do that in practice? Let's just take you, let's just take me back to you and the code editor. So what I'm going to do is like I'm just going to be creating a file let's say test.csv essentially the extension of excel files in of excel files in your desktop or in your windows or a macbook so what you really do is like I have a sample data available that's what I'm going to be using over here so essentially it has these four value data the email the age the grade the password and in each line it represents basically one line in excel file each line represents the email age grade and a password for an individual right so let's just save this up and now i'm going to do is like i'm just going to be opening this end-to-end -end file and let me just read this right so paste it come here i don't think so we need this remove this using csv file data and let me run the command dot let's see if the file is right okay so let me just remove or let me put all of these under comment and do a console or rather do a debug so what i'm going to do is like i'll just stop my script here and we'll see what what data it has or if we can use that data or not so while using this data i'm also going to be making use of something important and that's something which you have already learn in my previous tutorial but i'm going to be showing you in detail anyway so now let me take you back to the full desktop of mine and here i'm going to be running the command which is npx x cypress open and when i once i run it i am given with two options so let me click on e2e and then select the chrome browser and start the e2e test once again and then i'm presented with this particular window and what i'm going to do is like i'm just going to be opening that but that test of mine and also going to be opening the debugger file so the e2e test is right down below let me hit on the inspect come here click on it and there you go so it would run the first two tests successfully and will eventually come down to the third test where i'm trying to read the csv data so let's just wait for a moment and then once it comes here it'll stop it takes a moment roughly about 12 seconds as we had seen in the previous tutorial we want to wait and then let's just come here oh yeah i noticed that there is a problem here we have kept the file under the download and uh, what i can see is that it is a fixture where i have mistakenly write written it so let me go back to the code editor and there at the code editor let me just fix this problem at the code editor i've also noticed that the file name of the file was incorrectly quoted by the pilot so i've corrected that as well so now it is basically test.csv and before i share my entire desktop i would also want to keep this particular file opened up here parallelly in the same window just put it down here now you can see that it has basically all these all these records right so now again let me take you back to the entire desktop of mine and then i'm going to be running this once again so here is the one I think the Chrome is the browser that I need to run this at. 
and let me open the inspect and also minimize the window so that you can see the whole of it let's click on it now and let's see how it goes so it's running the first test case in which it's a success that's it's reading the username and password and trying to see if the application has moved to dashboard or not so it has moved to the dashboard now let's just wait for the test case to run and then there you go so now if you carefully look at data right so it the data is available in a string format right so essentially this is a string format and that's not exactly what we can use we are required to use this in a json format so that we can read the data properly and also apply it properly in different test cases right so how do we do that so in order to do so i'll again take you back to the code editor of mine and we're going to be writing a small utility and that particular utility will be reading the data and giving us the json response so in order to write so we are going to be writing a task so how do we write write a task it's fairly simple you come here and there you can see that it is mentioned here as set up node events and inside the node events i'm going to be writing an event listener which is on let's write on and on but i'm going to do that i'm going to be writing a task in order to implement a task i need to write a function name first so i'm going to be writing csv to json because this is exactly is the name of the file that name of the function that i want to give it to and then the csv.json will receive a data that i'm passing from my command from from my cypress script and then i'm going to be returning something so let's just see this beg your pardon so there is some mistake here yeah so this second argument is going to be an object that particular object will house all the functions that i'm giving as a task or i'm applying it as task so now uh, this particular thing is done now again if i go back here what i'm going to do is like i'm just going to be calling this task so let me write a logic const ty and let's just try to print this right here and save this script and now what i'm going to do is like i'm just going to be taking you back to the entire desktop of mine and there uh, i'm going to be running this once again or let me just close this down and reopen it so try again close select the chrome it opens up this particular window come down select on e2e do inspect and then click on the e2e thing just wait for the moment until it opens up the third test case in which case i'm running the task and also trying to read the csv in json format let's see how that goes there you go so now let's see if that works so let me share the whole whole of my desktop once again and then now it's running the cases um there you go so if you look at this particular data it says that it is basically a chainer id it's a dollar chainer which means it's a it's essentially a promise so in order to fulfill a promise what we're going to do is like we'll just not going to be writing it as is and instead of this what i'm going to do is like i need have to put a dot then function after this right so once i put a dot dead function and then i'm going to be having a json data and that's exactly what i'm going to be printing inside it so let's remove this and let's see if the username and password is correctly given over here it's going to be json data dot username and json data dot password and this let's just mark this any for now the errors are gone and i don't think so i'll have to move it anywhere i just want to check if things are right okay. so uh, 
uh, you have written a script properly let me take you back to the whole desktop of mine and here are the whole desktop there you go uh, let me refresh this thing so it passes the first test case second test case and moves to the third one and that's where we will have this i put a debugger point here at the console log json data where i'm receiving a json data converted meaning from strung to json data essentially so let's just wait and there you go so now you can see that i have received three json data over here and since there are three again i'm going to be taking you back to the code editor and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to be opening the or using the first data alone not really the whole right so uh, similarly you once you have a json data available you can basically write more complex logics around it such that uh, you know you can write uh, you know what what kind of data you need and then basis that you can decide what data you need to use right so now let me again share my entire desktop and there it has passed the first test case it's moving to the second one and then there you go it moves to the third one now it moves here and let me move forward 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 okay and it looks like an error again so let's see what this is mm -hmm. now let me take you to the code editor oh yeah i've, I've made a small mistake so it's not exactly the username which is given here i'm going to be making use of email rather right and the password is correct so let me come here and then write down email instead of a username because i'm not really writing a username per se in the red csv database so now again let me share the whole of my desktop and it has passed the first test case moving to the second one just wait until it reaches the third one and then we'll see how it works and there you go now you can see that it has used the u email for for this particular test case and then it has also used the password which is which was given in the csv file uh had we waited a little longer it would have certainly moved to the dashboard but uh, we had not really written a test case like that so we only wanted it like this we can write a session uh, probably once you do this and let's just wait um uh, you know what what it's gonna do is like it'll again try to see if we have moved to the dashboard successfully after inputting the email and a password coming from the csv file and there you go now you can see that it actually moved to the dashboard page the url is also there and it also passed all the test cases now let me take you back to the code editor so here the code editor if you notice that what we have really written in the in the cypress config.ts is that we've written a function right and assume that there are let's say 10 or 15 different functions available here so what would really happen is that this file would get super large and right? we don't want that it will be a maintenance nightmare so how we can do is solve this particular problem is that i'm going to be creating a file let's say cypress config i'm going to be creating a file cypress util and inside this cypress util i'm going to be transporting that particular function which we have used in the task here the cypress cypress util so let me just copy this bit completely and put it here and let's let's write export and write down function csv to json and save this here in the cypress config i'm going to be importing this particular function here import star as util from cypress util I think I've mistakenly given the folder name as cypressutil.ts. So let me correct this and 
I don't think so an extension is needed for the util folder there I'm going to be saving this let's see once again if I've reached to the right place and there you go so util folder now I'm going to be returning let me write utils rather because i'm going to be having i'm going to be having multiple such functions in there save it let me restart my test cases so i'm going to be killing them all clearing the console and up arrow a few times and wait for it to start and also i'm going to be binding that inside a function so csv to json and then i think that should be good let me start my test case once again i'll clear the console first and then prepare over two times and now let me share the whole of my desktop so once i started this test case this particular thing opened up and let me click on uh, chrome selecting that and then click here again do an inspect although it's not necessary now uh, i don't think so we would really need but uh, we would really need that just want to see if things work and want to see if the console error appears so let me clear this can see things have passed so far moving well i think it has also converted the entire string into json format and there you go we are pretty much good so this is all about this particular tutorial ladies and gentlemen i'm going to be writing more advanced and i'm going to be moving to ci pipeline in the next tutorial so that's going to be very very important what we're going to do there we are going to be basically choosing the github ci pipeline and if you want to know more about it please stay tuned and if you haven't really subscribed to my channel please do so if you're liking the series and if you're liking the work that i've been doing please don't forget to subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon you would be notified in case if i uh, if i post a new video so thanks a lot uh, once again ladies and gentlemen for watching the tutorial now huh? and i'm going to be seeing you in the next one